the Shenley Laboratories, producer of Penicillin Shenley and Shenley Pharmaceuticals, presents the Encore Theater. The Encore Theater play tonight, Dark Victory. Our stars are Francho Tone and Susan Peters. Tonight, Shenley Laboratories presents another in a new series of great dramatic programs. Some of our stories are fact, the struggles and accomplishments of great men of medicine. Others are fiction, stories of devotion to an ideal, individual heroism, or great courage. By these programs, Shenley Laboratories would remind you that medical science and progress is not cold, impersonal research, or pages of statistics, but a warm human story told in living terms whether it's the life of one of medicine's immortals or the everyday record of service rendered by your own physician. And now, Dark Victory, starring Susan Peters as Judith Traherne and Francho Tone as Dr. Fred Steele. Look, Dr. Parsons, I'm sorry, but I've closed my office. For good. I've built a little laboratory on my farm up in Vermont, and I've been waiting nine years to get started on my research. Well, don't tell me you've been bitten by the bug for scientific research. <laughs> Something like that. On what? Cells. Brain cells. Tell me, why do healthy cells suddenly go berserk and grow wild? Do you know? No, Neither I... Neither does anyone. We call them tumors, gliomas, cysts, cancers. We operate and cure with a knife. But one of these days, someone's going to find a serum that'll be to these growths what antitoxin is to diphtheria. Well, can't you put off leaving and see this girl? She's desperately ill. I've been watching her like a hawk, and she's losing ground each day. Count found that you're always talking about the obligation of doctors to humanity. Well, there's humanity waiting for you in the reception room. Well, all right, I'll have a look at the girl. But I warn you, I'm taking that train. I'm not going to be stuck here another nine years. I'll have her come in. Oh, uh, Fred, you may find her a bit, uh, well, defiant. She didn't want to come. She's trying desperately to convince herself and me that nothing's wrong with her. All right, let me see her. Come in, Judith. Now, this is Dr. Steele. How do you do, Dr. Steele? How do you do? And now, will you please excuse me? I have to run over to the hospital. Sit down, Mr. Hearn. Uh, Dr. Parsons tells me you're a great hunter. You don't look like a hunter. Fred, you could hardly expect me to enter your office leading a pack of hounds. <laughs> hardly. Well, tell me about yourself. I'm 23 years old and only child. I weigh 115 pounds stripped. I've had mumps, measles, and whooping cough all at the proper ages. Is that all... All the inconsequential facts. What are the consequential ones? Does that light bother you? No. Do you use your eyes a great deal? I generally keep them open, Doctor. That light is in your eyes. I'll lower the shade. I wish you wouldn't keep harping on that. There's nothing the matter with my eyes. You're squinting. There. There. That's better. Suit yourself. It's your office. What did you do yesterday? I went to the theater in the afternoon. I played bridge in the evening. Other way around, wasn't it? Why, yes, I guess it was. What was the play? Uh... Cyrano, wasn't it? Yes, why? Did you like it? Well, you see, I... You had a headache, didn't you? How long have you had these headaches? Oh, I... I don't have them. You have one now? No, I have not. How did you come out at bridge yesterday? Well, let me Quickly. think. Quickly. I don't remember. You've been losing a lot lately, haven't well, you? Why do you ask me these stupid questions? There's nothing wrong with me. I'm well, absolutely well. I'm young and strong and nothing can touch me. Neither you nor Dr. Parsons can make an invalid out of me. Now I'm going. I'm sorry to have wasted so much of your time. You're running away because you're frightened, aren't you? That's not true. Oh, yes, it is. That's why you held certain things back from Dr. Parsons. You were afraid to admit them. You've been having those headaches for months. They've been getting worse lately, and your eyes have been cutting up, too. Just as though someone were shutting a pair of folding doors until your vision's almost cut in half. You pretended it was imagination, but it isn't. You can't concentrate. You're irritable because your nerves are all on edge. You're afraid to admit it, but you can't deny it. It's a lie. I'm well... Oh, why do you bully me like this? Because I want to help you. Won't you let me? 
How about your train to Vermont? There'll be other trains to Vermont. I want to examine you now. Take some x-rays. Yes, of course. I'm... I'm sorry I was so difficult. I like the way you fought back at me. You've been a good sport. Come on, now let's see what we can find out about this head of yours. Well, Fred? It is glioma, Dr. Parsons. I was afraid of that. We'll have to operate immediately, of course, but... There'll be a recurrence? Yes. Well, you know all the men I called in for consultation. They were all of the same opinion. And that means? Approximately ten months. She'll be an invalid in the meantime, I suppose. No, this is a rare case. She'll apparently be as well as any of us. That is, until... Well, her sight may fail near the end. There'll only be a little time after that. Fred, I... I don't know what to say. I love that girl. So do I. Are you going to tell her? Would you want her to know? No. That's your answer. Ready in surgery, Dr. Steele. Yes, Judith. Will I be all right, Fred? Yes, darling. You'll have a complete surgical recovery. That's good. Fred, when you got inside my head, did you find any sense in it? <laughs> this hat, Anne? Well, I like each of the other twelve. Say, you've certainly gotten fussy since that operation. One day out of bed and you're going through those hats like a cyclone. Oh, I want to look my best. We're going to meet Fred at five. Oh, I want to look so dazzling that he won't look at another girl. Judith, you're in love with him. <laughs> does it show? <laughs> does it show? Just take a good look in that mirror. Oh, um, has he given you any encouragement? Not a ripple in the water. Oh. It's awful. But it's wonderful. I've got something to live for now. Something to hope for. And mm. the next time he comes over, any time there's a lull in the conversation, you might just mention what a good wife I'd make and what an ideal mother. Well, as a matter of fact, I have an appointment with him in this, this afternoon in his office. I'll, um, I'll toss it in the conversation and let you know the results, if you're serious. I'm horribly afraid. I'm terribly serious. <gasps> well, it couldn't happen to a nicer girl. You take these powders, Mrs. Robertson. You'll be all right. Dr. Steele, I, I've only known you since Judith's operation, but I've known her and loved her most of her life. May, may I take the liberty of an old friend? Yes, of course. Does Judith mean anything more to you than just the patient? Very much more. Marriage would mean to her a home, children, plans for the future. Could you watch her growing happier every day with this, this thing creeping up behind her back? Could you stand that? It isn't a question of what I could stand. The only thing that matters now is that she should be happy every hour. All my life, I've told people what to do. Now, I, I don't know what to do. I love her. And I, I don't know what to do. Mr. Hearn. Dr. Steele had to go out on a case. He wants you to wait. He didn't think he'd be long after five. All right, Miss Wainwright. I'll sit down here at the desk and wait. Oh, uh, do you mind if I finish packing the books in the reception room? Not at all. 
Do you think he's really going to Vermont this time? I don't know. I've given up trying to guess. I'm just going to have everything ready, just in case. He's going to be a great scientist. He... Case history folder. Judith Traherne. Well, this looks interesting. Might as well spend my time reading about myself. What did you say, Mr. Hearn? Nothing, just doing a little reading. My dear Dr. Steele, a study of the case history of Miss Judith Traherne and an examination of the tissue sample sent me lead me to concur with your diagnosis. The prognosis is definitely poor. Death in such cases is... Miss Wainwright? Yes? What does prognosis mean? What? It means what the future of a case looks like. What does prognosis poor mean? It means hopeless. Why did you ask? What are you reading? My case history, Miss Wainwright. My case history. Tell the doctor that that I couldn't wait. Tell him that, that I had nothing to see him about. After all. Oh, Miss Traherne, please wait. These things don't necessarily... Just tell me. Dr. Steele, thanks. And goodbye. moment we shall return to our play, Dark Victory. But first, a message of importance concerning the miracle drug of our time. Ladies and gentlemen, you and most other people realize that the early production of penicillin was beset by countless difficulties. But do you also realize that the expansion of production facilities for penicillin has resulted in more than increased quantities, has permitted the development of new forms of penicillin as well? When Shenley Laboratories, along with 20 other firms, was designated by the United States government to produce penicillin for the saving of lives on both battlefront and home front, the miracle drug was manufactured only in its original powdered form. Today, however, the Shenley Laboratories program of continuing research has developed additional specialized penicillin products that your doctor may, in his judgment, prescribe as penicillin trochees and tablets for administration by mouth. Penicillin ointment to be directly applied to affected skin surfaces, and ophthalmic ointment for treating certain infections of the eye. In the spirit of medical progress, Shenley salutes at this time the extensive experimentation which has brought the boon of many new cures to all mankind. In addition, Shenley Laboratories pledges itself to continue its extensive program of research in the field of pharmaceuticals, with the purpose ever before it of placing more and greater healing aids in the hands of your doctor. Now we return to our play, Dark Victory, starring Francho Tone and Susan Peters. Why aren't you laughing, Alec? I came out with you because I thought you'd be gay and laughing. All right, I'll be gay and laughing. What should we laugh about? How about life? Life and the things it does to us. When we think we're on top, we're on the bottom. When we start making plans about all the years we're going to live, we find we haven't any left. What are you talking about? So, here you are, Judith. I've been hunting all over town. Did you forget you had a date with me? I suddenly found I didn't have time to keep it. Hello, Dr. Steele. Sit down. Yes, yes, sit down. Join the party. The more, the merrier. Let's keep everything as merry as possible. A short life, but a merry one, I always say. What do you always say? I've been meaning to ask you, Doctor. Was I a specimen case? Will I make the medical journal? Judas, I don't... Why didn't you tell me? What's this all about? Tell him what it's all about. Explain to Alec about prognosis poor. A few months of pretending you're well and blindness. Then, so long, my friend. Judas, don't talk oh, like that. Oh, stop it, Fred. It's no longer necessary to humor the patient. You'd have done anything to make me happy, wouldn't you? Even married me, if necessary, out of pity. Oh, you're very kind. But thank you so much, it won't be necessary. You see, I'm not in your care anymore. You will always be in my care. Judas, 
I hadn't thought to say it here, under these circumstances, but I do want to marry you. I love you. I want to marry you. Why? What for? What's the point? What's the reason? Judith, don't do this. Don't strike back at me this way. I want you to find peace. We all have to die. The tragic difference is that you know when and we don't. The important thing is the same for all of us. To live our lives so we can meet death when it comes decently, beautifully, finally. I'll die as I please. Come on, Alec. Let's get out of here. Let's go someplace where there's more laughs. Judith. Goodbye, Fred. Sorry I can't stay longer, but I'm sure you understand. I just haven't the time. Hi, Miss Judith. What are you doing down here in the stables at this hour of the night? I couldn't sleep. I just got in from a party and I didn't feel like going to bed. Saw your liar. Thought you might like some company. Yeah. Uh, sit down. And make yourself comfortable. Thanks. How's Challenger? Uh, he's a good horse. You were right about him. I can tell a champion every time. Oh, I'm so tired, Michael. You've been going too hard. For weeks now, it's been party after party. If you'll forgive my saying so, it's a great waste of time. Waste of time? Well, why do you say that? We only live once, Miss Judith. That's right. Only once. Talk to me, Michael. I need someone to talk to tonight. Talk to me as one human being to another. Talk to me as a man. Are you happy, Michael? Hmm. Is anybody... Are you afraid to die, Michael? I wouldn't want to die while you're alive. You're making love to me. You invited me to talk to you as a man. One thing I know, I'm a lot better than a lot of them that's playing around with you. Are you, Michael? Yeah. If you only knew the things I've wanted to say to you ever since the first time I came to work for you. Say them, Michael. Have you any idea at all what you're saying, Miss Judith? I think we're both a little crazy tonight. You're right. We are a little crazy. And you're right about something else. I can't go on this way. Tonight it would be you, and after tonight, someone else, and on and on until the last hour. Michael, I can't die like that. Die? What are you talking about? I'm going to die in a few months, Michael. Does that frighten you? Heaven forgive you for saying a thing like that. Yes. Heaven forgive me. When it comes, it, it's it got to be met finely and beautifully, doesn't it? Michael, thank you. Thank you for waking me up. Hello, Fred. Look here, I, I came over to say that I'm sorry. I hope you don't mind the unorthodox hour. Come in, Judith. Oh, I've been such a fool, darling. I've been such a fool. And that happens to all of us periodically. If only... Only you let me see you sometimes. You're going to. Every day. You're coming to Vermont with me. All this time I've been waiting for you, counting the moments. A moment is all we have. It's all lovers ever have. A few perfect hours. I tried to explain that to you before. What will this do to you? The shadow's fallen on my earth. It mustn't fall on yours. Your shadow's mine. And your victory over it will be mine, too. I'm afraid it will be a dark victory. You look wonderful. Vermont agrees with you. Oh, but look, I haven't seen Fred yet. Oh, I'd forgotten. He's uh -huh. working in there. You go on in and talk to him. I've got to see you about dinner. All right. Come in. Hello, Fred. Anne. <laughs> oh, it's good to see you. I'm sorry I couldn't get away to meet you at the train, but we're working on an experiment. Oh, I know. You just couldn't tear yourself away from the microbes, huh? 
<laughs> How does Judith look to you? Oh, just like a bride of two months should look. Radiant. Uh, Fred, is there a chance for her? No. Does she realize it? Yes. All my life I've seen people suffer and seen them die. But I've never seen anyone like her. From what deep well she draws her courage, I can only wonder. Well, you saw her. She laughs, sticks out her chin... She can take it. But she must think that there's... No, a... she doesn't think it's forgotten. That's our pact. We never mention it. And you mustn't either. You'll want to, but you mustn't. Not even with your eyes. You're in the pact, too. Uh, I'll try. a nice garden, Anne. Mm, beautiful. Pretty soon I'll be all in bloom. There'll be roses over that arbor over there. And, and hey, hmm? hey, look how it's clouding up. It must be going to rain. But, Judith, it's not... It's getting darker by the second. Well, Anne, Anne, look how dark it's getting. Yes. Yes, I see, dear. Anne! I can still feel the heat of the sun. Anne! No. No, it isn't true. They're all clouds. The sun has gone. It's all right, Anne. Anne, it, it's all right. Hey, out there, I got some news. We're going to New York. They just read me a wire over the phone. Come on in, I'll show you. Judith, you can't go. Don't tell him. Maybe it isn't anything. Come on. Hey, read this. A wire from Fisher in Philadelphia. Martha took it down. Yes, of course, darling. Well? It's, it's very nice. Nice? Is that all? Well, you read it, Anne. I never could read Martha's writing. Dr. Frederick Steele, Brattleboro, Vermont. Wild with excitement over your latest report. Biological tests convince me you may be on right road with isolation. Isolation, you see? Choke off the oxygen. No, no, you two wouldn't understand. Believe we should present material at board meeting in New York tomorrow. Please wire. My enthusiastic congratulations, Fisher. Oh, it's wonderful, darling, isn't it, Anne? Oh, excuse my lack of enthusiasm. I, I was bowled over for a moment. Sure, don't I know? I'm in the clouds myself. I wired Fisher I'd meet him at 10 in the morning. I've got to hurry and get packed. Martha's got your bags already. You're going to tell him. And keep him from going? No. I wouldn't dream of it. This means everything in the world to his career and his future. His life must go on. Judith, come up here a moment, will you? And please, just go on as though nothing had happened. Please. I know what's best. All right, darling. Whatever you say... Judith! Coming! Where did Martha hide my shirts this time? Darling, you know, I don't think I'll go. You'll be busy, and i just be sitting around the hotel room and... Nonsense. A couple of days in New York will do you good. Please, darling, don't force me to go. Force you? Well, well, of course, honey, it's anything you want, but... New York would bore me. Really, it would. This is my home now. I'd rather stay here. Judith, you're trembling. Am I? Well, it's the first time we've been separated. Mayn't a girl get a little sentimental? I'm not going. Darling, are you worried about me? Every moment you're not in my sight. You needn't be. Anne's here. Yes, but if anything should happen... It won't. But even so, I'm not afraid anymore. Hey, didn't we agree we wouldn't talk about it? I used to be afraid. I died a thousand times. The next time, death will come as an old friend, gently and quietly. Oh, Judith. We've had so much, Fred. If we lived to be a hundred, we could have no more. Darling, you've done so much for me. Judith, I... I don't want to go on living without you. You must. You must go on with your work. Oh, darling, I'm so proud of that. What a great thing it is to be a doctor and a scientist... And what a proud thing to heal pain and save lives. You have so much to give to the world, Fred. I don't want my death to be futile and meaningless. I want you to wipe out this thing that is going to take me away from you. You must. And you will. Darling, I'll try. Nothing can hurt us now. For what we've had can never be destroyed. That's our victory over the dark. And it's a victory because we're not afraid. Thank you, Judith. Oh, now, come on. You've got to hurry. You take your bag and I'll take your hat and coat. 
You served me back in a hurry. Well, I brought the car around the front for you. You'll take care of everything, Ann. Hurry, I'll darling. Now you've got to drive like thing. mad. Goodbye, darling. You know where to reach me if you need me. Mind yourself in the big city. <sighs> Bye. Bye. Did we plan any hyacinths yet, Anne? Yes. No. I don't know. I... Would you... Go out now and plant some? They're his favorite flowers. They should do well in this soil. The garden will be very beautiful in June with everything blooming. You'll take good care of my flowers, won't you? Yes. Go on. Plant them now. Do you think I'd leave you, darling? You must. Please understand, Anne, that no one must be here. No one. I have to prove to him that I can do it alone. Maybe it will help him over some bad moments in the future to remember it. I'm going up now and... and sleep. There used to be a prayer. Do you remember it? If I should die... Now I lay me down to sleep. Yes, that's it. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should... If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. That's a beautiful prayer, isn't it? I haven't thought of it in years. Good night, Anne. Good night, Judith. Ladies and gentlemen, before Franz Tone comes back to the microphone, may we leave this thought with you. All of us take for granted our feeling of confidence in our own doctor. Could there be any greater tribute to the medical profession than this fact, that we do take for granted the confidence we feel in its members? Shenley Laboratories presents this series of programs in honor of America's doctors. And now, Franz Tone. Ladies and gentlemen, to sum up the spirit of this program, the simple and beautiful... Prayer of the Physician, written centuries ago by Maimonides, seems to me to be apt and fitting. The eternal providence has appointed me to watch over the life and death of all thy creatures. May I always see in the patient a fellow creature in pain. Grant me strength and opportunity always to extend the domain of my craft. This is the prayer of the Physician. It's ages old, yet today it is as new as the hope for a peaceful way of life for all the world. May we invite you to listen again next week at the same time when Shenley Laboratories presents A Man to Remember, starring Mr. Lionel Barrymore, a great star in a great story. Good night. <laughs> Dark Victory was produced and directed by Bill Lawrence and was presented through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, who this year is celebrating the 20th anniversary of Sound Pictures. It was a Gene Holloway adaptation. Susan Peters appeared through the courtesy of Metro-Golden-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Holiday in Mexico. This is Frank Graham speaking for Shenley Laboratories, producer of Penicillin Shenley, and inviting you to listen next Tuesday at the same time when you will hear Mr. Lionel Barrymore in A Man to Remember. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.